Uh, with, with the SDGs, um, I think we need to look back at the MDGs where HIV was a goal, a specific goal. Um, in, in the SDGs, it has become a target lumped with all the other you know, diseases like malaria, TB, uh, hepatitis, waterborne diseases, etc. So it has been, in a sense, deprioritized. Uh, you can look at it uh, in terms of having had successes um, in the past, uh, in terms of um, it being addressed in many countries, but I don't think we should be complacent because in other countries, the reverse is happening where, you know, the cases are again starting to rise. And in this region, we need to look at it from the perspective of it being a key population driven epidemic and and so it requires a different set of, of interventions and i think if we look at the sdgs we cannot just rely on the health goal alone we need to look at all the other goals that could serve our purpose in terms of addressing uh, hiv if, if you look at how unaids has uh, crafted its strategy it used five of the goals so there's the goal three on health Goal 5 on gender equality, uh, Goal 10 addressing inequalities, Goal 16 looking at access to justice and, and, and peace, and Goal 17 which is on partnerships. Um, so these are sort of you know, the more direct correlations if you're addressing you know, gender violence or, or uh, gender inequality, if you're also addressing human rights issues, decriminalization, if you're addressing the issue of HIV being a multi-sectoral uh, response, you can use all these other goals. Um, and along with that, if you dig even further, you know, for instance, goal one, which is on poverty, uh, because we do have to address issues of inequality, and poverty is a is a driver, uh, and it, it can be a um, a factor that can can in fact make um, you know people much much more vulnerable. So. Um, and, and also, for instance, the issue of employment and, and decent work, and you know, you can also link that the issue of the the goal of education. Um, you can also link that to issues of young people, their access to comprehensive sexuality education, for example. So you can you can use some of the goals, um, but I think we also need to point out that the SDGs will not be the solution uh, solely or you know in a comprehensive way because they don't discuss SOGI issues. They don't discuss um, um, sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. They're not in the SDGs. Sexual rights, they're not in the SDGs. Um, so, you know, uh, we need to try and see how much we can use from the SDGs, but we shouldn't be limited into that framing alone. Well, I don't think we need to invent new answers or new response. We know what will solve the epidemic. The, the issue really here is political will and political leadership because we know what will end AIDS, you know. Uh, and, and, and so it's, it's just, um, I guess, you know, for us, we've been in this work for quite some time, uh, frustrating to see that we're not done. We're not really done with the activism and the struggle and, and we need to look at it from that frame, you know. Um, that this is really a, a political um, struggle in that sense. We shouldn't be content with, you know, being able to be given funding to do this community-based testing and to do all this service delivery. It's not enough. You know, you, you can only do so much, but if a new government comes in and says no to that, you know, you're, you're caught there and with nothing. So you, we have to really sustain the, the activism here. Um, the other thing is, and I think this is the value of engaging in this platform like APRSM, where we need to really build solidarity with other social movements, because that's, you know, in a way we've been too privileged and siloed in our responses. And, and we have, um, and I'm not saying we didn't achieve anything, we did, it's, you know, we've had really good achievements, uh, but at the same time, we know that our work alone will not solve the issues. If you look at the issue of human rights and, and gender uh, inequality, we need to do that in solidarity with other social movements. And, and so I think if we build that momentum together in, in solidarity, then you know, if other constituencies and, and, and groups and communities take our issue, then I think you know, we have a broader base for our activism. It's, it's also 
important to take cognizance of the closing spaces for civil society. So we need to really be vigilant about protecting that space, whatever it is that's left, and uh, insist on that space to, together, you know, with us as a broad community, so that, you know, even if it's going back to just making ourselves visible and making our voices heard, you know, we need to sustain that. Otherwise, we'll really fall off, and 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 governments will not care. I mean, I think that's the unfortunate reality now that, that we're facing. So, yeah, we have to sustain the activism.